Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have some news to cover, some delicious news, finally, about Guild Wars 2 and of Dragons. Apparently, a select few media outlets were invited to play End of Dragons early. I'm not fine, I'm not jealous. I'm not uh, envious or jealous or anything of the sort. It's totally fine. But we do have some delicious information that they have all shared across the various blog posts. You'll probably find it on social media if you go on Twitter. You'll find multiple different outlets where people have written up their reviews, but in today's video, I will be personally using Massively Overpowered's article to pinpoint some information, some new bits of information that we have yet to see, and of course, show off some of the screenshots that they have captured during the preview event. Now, when it comes to guild halls and fishing, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of those. So I'm not really going to be covering that. I'm not really going to be going too much into it. It's there for people that want to read it and to get into it and who are excited about it. I will probably have enjoyment when I fish, but it's not the main thing that I'm focused on. But I want to get into two aspects about this article. First, the Echovald Wilds and the Strike Missions. They were on a guided tour through Echovald Wilds, playing a specific event, not the meta event, uh, in in interacting with some of the Jade Brotherhood, and then the article goes on to talk about some of the strike missions. So I'm going to be reading and going over a little bit of the specific event that they were doing. We were here at Fort Aspenwood to experience an event chain that the devs were particularly proud of. Note that this is not the map's meta event described in the Echovald Wilds stream last year, but an entirely separate event. When the event triggers, the fort goes into lockdown mode as researchers evacuate and begin recruiting players to help them put a stop to the jade mechs that have become suddenly violent. Players must use the cannons from the siege turtles to destroy the shield generators before moving deeper into the fort. Make sure to thin the ranks of haywire jade mechs spawning everywhere, as they can overwhelm even the hardy siege turtles. Next, players must make their way into the basement of the fort, where the Jade Brotherhood has been working on a teched up new version of the God's Vengeance, the super weapon the Kurziks were trying to complete in the aforementioned competitive mission from factions. It has been affected by the same mysterious force as the Jade Max and must be neutralized before it overloads and destroys the entire forest. The God's Vengeance has various phases that are themed after each of the six gods, which is a nice touch. As we get some more God interaction with the Kurziks, of course, old factions lore, Guild Wars factions, the Kurziks, the Luxons, still ties to the human gods. Seeing this at least displayed and written out as term in terms of how uh, an event will function with you, using the siege turtles to actually capitalize on the new mastery to get through the fort faster and then for you to go into this other boss fight area where you deal with this new super weapon. Of course they have mentioned that this isn't the actual meta event but this event in particular already sounds pretty cinematic so it is kind of setting a high bar for what we can expect with the meta events in particular. Oftentimes meta events are revered as being much more complex, cinematic, and just overall much more enjoying and rewarding than normal dynamic events. So I have high hopes for the meta events in particular. And then after the Echo of Wilds segment, they talk about strike missions, and this is where I really want to get into it and have like my overall reaction. Right off the bat, loved the stuff on the Echo of Wilds. This article continues. We also got a chance to try out one of the four new strike missions launching with End of Dragons called Aetherblade Hideout. Now, I'm going to put a pin in this and we'll definitely come back to this revelation in news. This one of four new strike missions. But we'll continue. The boss of this particular 10 player instance is fittingly Captain Mai Trin, whom longtime Guild Wars 2 players will remember as the leader of the Aetherblades in Living World Season 1. As previously detailed, the boss fights of strike missions will appear as part of the End of Dragons story, but the strike version glosses over the narrative. It adds additional, more challenging mechanics. If you liked Ice Brood Saga's strike missions, I don't think you'll find anything too surprising or new about this fight, but I also think it will be a fun addition to the current rotation of strikes. More of the same isn't a bad thing. Uh, we'll get to that. I think uh, I, this article in particular, I think kind of contradicts itself in a way. To a degree, you have the person who played it, 
their review and then of course you have the developers comments which they lead into right after this paragraph of them saying it's nothing new but after this it goes in to say that the developers quote learned something from end of dragon strike missions uh, they they write the devs from the encounters team talked about some of the lessons they learned from ice fruit saga strike missions while strikes aren't supposed to be as punishing as raids a lot of players found that they could get through them just fine while ignoring many of the intended mechanics for instance, when my guild does Bone Skinner, we usually just ignore the Torch mechanic altogether and take an extra Heal Scourge. It's just faster that way. But this time around, the encounter designers wanted to keep the content accessible while doing more to punish players who stand in the fire, so to speak. Not so much to make them more hardcore, but to make sure players are actually learning how to do the fight properly and not just sliding by, blissfully unaware that the healer is carrying them. ArenaNet also talked about its redoubled efforts to be consistent with telegraph design language so players can easily learn and predict what's going to happen where and when. And they talk about how you can get one shot, but it's not going to be like so hardcore where you didn't even expect it. Um, and then they continue saying, if hardcore is your thing, of course, as we know, remember that more raid-like hard mode versions of each of the strike missions will be launching sometime after the expansion, with additional, more challenging mechanics and improved rewards in tow. I have had such a love and such a focus on PvE content in Guild Wars 2 recently, so I have a lot to talk about. I guess we'll kind of hit each point as this article lays it out. First and foremost, End of Dragons only has a total of or strike missions and while I love strike missions and while I am happy that we are getting strike missions with the launch it is unfortunate I'm not gonna lie my initial reaction if I'm being totally accepting of my emotions as we all have and that is fair you know opinions but challenge modes are coming however ch challenge modes aren't necessarily entirely new bosses if the challenge modes do add entirely new phases to the bosses, then you could kind of argue we're getting around, you know, eight, maybe six quote unquote total bosses if these challenge modes are actually changing the fight in large. But if they're just making it slightly more challenging, a shorter enrage timer, there's one new mechanic that you have to juggle, I do find that to be rather unfortunate. I can't help but look back to Ice Fruit Saga and how with one living world episode, one episode, they released three strike missions. And granted, these strike missions were fairly easy. Bone Skinner, I think, is one of the more challenging strike missions. However, I think it is a failed strike mission because no one does the mechanic. <laughs> Because the mechanic is too difficult, A, and it's so much easier to be out heal things because healing in this game is not balanced. Now, they haven't talked about if they are even going to be continuing doing strike missions. If strike missions are going to be a consistent thing after the expansion, well after the expansion launches. Will we have grace periods and drought periods where they are padded by introducing one or two strike missions every month, every other month? however long it takes, or are they going to be paired up with a living world? And how soon is the living world going to be coming to the game? There's so many questions to where getting an announcement of one of four does feel a little bit more gutting than if we knew more information as to if strike missions are going to be a consistent thing that is on their own timeline, or if they're going to be connected to living world, and how soon after are they actually doing production for living world. There's a lot of questions here that we won't get answers to. Nevertheless, this article is confusing uh, to a degree, but you always get this. You one person says one thing, another person says another. The person who writes this wrote the article in a way that, at least to a veteran and an experienced player, left a sentiment of nothing new to these strike missions. They're not looked at as something that is uh, a, a separate, like a totally increased level from Ice Brood Sagas. They had mentioned that they're more of the same. And I would argue for an expansion, you don't want more of the same. You want to have a, a consistent branch of content. You want to have a consistent, like, are you doing dungeons? Are you doing raids? Are you doing fractals? What are you doing? Stick with that. However, the strike missions themselves with expansions, I want them to be bold. I want the mechanics to be rather intricate, even for strike missions. I want them to be more elaborate than just Frainier of Jormag or, or just the two Kodan that are like easily killed within a minute or two of them actually starting the encounter. 
and I was really hoping that the strike missions inherently had a level of difficulty of raids. Because honestly, raids are not all that challenging, most of them I'll say. They are a fun time, and they're not necessarily a cakewalk, but I think raids actually have a really healthy middle ground, most of them. Uh, but if they went for more of that level, I would have really appreciated that. But from the way it's written in the other articles that I've seen, I haven't necessarily gotten the sense that they are equivalent to the current raids. And this is endgame. This is the endgame of Guild Wars 2. And if we are not continuing with raids, because that is very up in the air in terms of a question, I want strike missions to actually be raid quality, where the difficulty of the boss is comparable to a raid. Because you don't have to do the whole wing, you just have to do the boss in the arena. And then for the challenge modes, I was expecting them to be similar to challenge mode raids, where it's that difficulty of raids, but then bumped up. It seems like End of Dragons is going to maintain in its Ice Brood Saga difficulty from the writer's perspective. But then we get the comments about the developers and how they've learned from the situation of Ice Brood Saga, where they are not making it to where you can, I guess, easily cheese and neglect mechanics, but you can still get one shot, which does increase the level of difficulty in, in a way. So I'm really getting mixed signals from developers versus the actual product reviewer. I kind of fall into this middle ground where I don't know what to think and it's more so a matter of this is probably an entirely subjective point of view where we have to then just wait to play it ourselves. We can't really take one person's word for it or even four or five people's word for it. But if we got a collective of like 20, 50 people together where they all then gave their their comments in, in terms of the difficulty and intricacies of these strike missions and then average them out, maybe then we would get a clearer picture. But I don't think we can really do that with the information that we have at hand. So that's my long-winded uh, topic about the news that we got about strike missions. Yes, I'm happy that we are getting strike missions. Yes, I'm disappointed, at least without any knowledge or, or experience of playing the strike missions. I am disappointed that we're only getting four, so it's a toss-up. And then we're hearing this conflicting information, at least from this article, from this reviewer, that it's nothing really new, but that the developers are trying to learn to still provide some intricacies and not neglect mechanics. Last but not least, I want to look at some of these screenshots. I'm on the article here, and we'll just kind of pop these up. This is the My Trend screenshot. I mean, I was really excited to see my trend being a boss. I really hope the Aether Blades are not our allies. I had mentioned, I had seen some people saying like, what if they were our allies or they're helping us? I don't think that would really be fitting. I want the Aether Blades to almost be that consistent antagonist along with the Jade Brotherhood. As it is, my trend will probably see similar animations and interactions of shadow stepping like in the Fractal. But there are these like red orbs, which are rather interesting. There does seem to be this like chain linking mechanic that my trend has. I hope it isn't just a repeat of the fractal where you just have to let her stand in an area to break her shield, but she does have this dome of the mist situation. So it is kind of worrying that it might kind of be the same fight or at least they'll pull. I mean, if they pull one mechanic from the fractal as an homage, as a, as a callback, that's fine. But I want these to be different. There does seem to be this cool, like, wide conal shot with her pistol some attacks there, there do seem to be these continued like streams of magic and then once again these orbs we have some mechanists in the background which is always great to see there's a little catmander how cute oh what i would have ah oh, what i would have done to play this and then we get which i actually really love we get some screenshots and more images of the legendaries I don't know why they did not show us the entire set of legendaries during the live stream for the quote unquote gameplay overview, but we're at least getting them via third parties. We have a, I believe longbow or could be shortbow, really cool looking. If you like the more angelic, holy aesthetic, the Orin aesthetic will probably be very fitting. We have this nice lineup of just characters in awesome looking armor, and of course, wielding the legendaries. We have a bow, we have what seems to be a torch or a dagger, or maybe this is like an ax and a dagger. It kind of looks like a torch though. And then we have the staff. I gotta admit, I had made Nevermore, but, but that staff is actually really cool looking. And um, yeah, and then we have the greatsword, which is probably going to be the legendary weapon, Gen 3, that I go for. 
that I'll probably go for others now. And then there's the hammer, which looks really good. I like the hammer quite a bit. We have the shield with a nice little dragon horn from Maureen's little snout, and then a th uh, the sword, which you can't really see. We also get an, a shot of the rifle. Don't love this rainbow effect, not gonna lie. I know. <laughs> I don't like Bifrost to begin with, with, it, with its rainbow particles. And I know Orin is the dragon of prismatic light and of course a prism showing, separating the colors of the light, you know, yada, yada, yada. But I don't love, I just don't like rainbow. Does that make sense? Rainbow as a color combination doesn't look good to me for some reason. It doesn't. And then of course we have the staff. We have some like more elegant white yellow light some hints of subtle rainbow we'll probably see a similar skill effect spell effect to the orin infusion that you can get from replaying every single living world season which is actually a really good thing to do go do that and then we of course we have uh some of the siege turtle events from echo Valley wilds uh, and then we see them going deeper into the complex as they had mentioned into the gods vengeance weapon we see some of these other jade little baubles that we have seen in other trailers and previews which i kind of feel like is going to be the the last mastery track that they have not yet mentioned so everyone that is your kind of guild wars 2 end of dragons news wrap up about the third party release of more information on uh, strike visions events and gameplay that we actually still have really yet to see in action which is very unfortunate but hopefully we get to see some soon hopefully there's a gameplay trailer of some kind or a live stream that shows off some more events and or a portion of the strike mission because it's like it's like especially if the like a normal strike mission doesn't have the story or the narrative i'm still really just bewildered as to why we haven't seen a trailer for the strike missions showing off the fight of my trin and if they're willing to spoil my trin which isn't a huge spoiler but if they're willing to spoiler that my trin will be a strike mission before end of dragons releases why not pair that with a gameplay trailer? At least of this one in particular. Like something, something. A minute, a minute and 30 second trailer. But that's neither here nor there. Thank you all for coming. Like the video if you liked it, comment below your thoughts about what I've talked about when it comes to the events of the Echo Valley Wilds, Siege Turtles, Strike Missions, there are only being four. Do you think it'll be difficult or do you think it's going to be a similar easy, easy game mode uh, like Ice Brute Saga? But everyone, thank you for coming. Thank you so much for coming. If you'd like to help support the channel, I have a Patreon. We get early access to videos, exclusive content. And I'll see you all in the next video. If you'd like to pre-order End of Dragons, I have links down below. Thanks, Serena. I really appreciate it. You're good. Anyway, I will see you all later. Bye, everyone. Mwah.